Hello and welcome to ConsoleTraining.com's video on MA2 programming tricks. Uh, my name is Alex Hughes, and today we will be going through a couple of questions that I've been asked, and I'll show you a couple of uh, a couple of temp fader questions that I've had. Anyway, let's jump into it. Here we have our MA software, uh, MA 2.9.0.7. And what a mouthful it is, but what a good, fantastic version it is. Anyway, let's jump uh, into adding some fixtures. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add 10 dimmers, and we'll start them on channel 1. And then the next thing we'll do is rename that layer, because I hate unnamed layers. And then we'll add two 700s for our temp fader trading aspect. And we can see that I've already typed it in. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. And we'll have them in extended mode. Port them, and we'll have two of them. And then we'll start them at 701. Okay, so today we'll be mainly working in our programmer window because I don't need too much um, actual space. But with 2.9, one of the options is having a couple of options, whether you want single screen, which is what we're used to, multi-screen, which is the one that adds as many screens as you want, or they've got a new option called uh, single screen internal only. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, and that means that only the internal screens, so screen, uh, command, and two, three, and four, will all be internal, and then your two external screens can be put on external screens. Fairly self-explanatory. I've also got the command wing bar on, which appears on uh, page or screen two, and we can see that we've got the right amount of buttons and the right amounts of faders, and they've also compressed the layer bar in, which is lovely. You can also put that in your workflow. Anyway, that's, that's enough like fanboying over MA2.9. Uh, let's begin. So, our first thing is we'll bring up these, and uh, to do that we'll uh, jump into our, our nice command and render view. So we'll bring up these channels, so we'll go channel please, channel 1 through 10, and we'll bring them up like this. We can see we've got our lovely source 4s. In this case, 19 degree ones. And the question I've been asked, when creating effects and stuff, how can I have uh, how can I have certain effects that go through certain orders? So uh, we'll we'll show that to them today. So let's just build a very small layout for us. I won't even color code it today. No, I think that's all I'll need. So we'll import, in this case, a dimmer sign, dimmer chase, and with those, let's let's quickly create a group. So we'll store it, and we'll go group, and we'll name it as uh, dimmers1-10. <coughs> oh. And then we'll run a dimmer chase through them, which we can see it doing now. Or we can run, oh sorry, that was a dimmer sign, this is a dimmer chase. And then we'll turn that effect off. Now the question was, if I create those, is there any easy way for me to select numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, or 1, 3, 5, 7, 9? Now there are two ways of doing that. We can obviously load a odd and even Oh, you know what I really needed? I really needed a, uh... Let's, let's migrate. Let's migrate to a proper screen, hey? And let's go back. Let's rebuild what I just put over there. So we'll put in... Channel page. Channels. Stuff that I've just put back.
also put in Uh, it doesn't matter, we can see the command down the bottom. <coughs> anyway, so the the easiest way of grabbing the odds and evens is simply grabbing our dimmers and going odds. See, now that it's grabbed those and our evens, that grabs those. And then we can sort of do dimmer chases or dimmer signs across those. Now the other way, and... You can also, with those MA tricks that I've shown you, I'm just right clicking to grab those ones. Uh, let's drop back to the. That it's actually doing it. Um, you can create your own MA tricks or you can load predefined ones. So you can go one of three, two of three, and three of three. And then we can go dimmers one through five and go one of three should be these ones, and then two of three, which would be these, and then three of three, these. We can manipulate or save these groups as we need to. The other method is the way that MA stores groups is the way that you type it in. So if you type in channel one plus three plus five, plus 7, plus 9, plus 2, plus 4, plus 6, plus 8, plus 10. Bring them up, we'll see that they'll all come up. But if we store it, and we call it odds and evens, when we run this effect, we'll see that it runs sequentially, which is interesting. There we go. So we can see if we manually advance through them, it works. It's obviously something in that effect that I've uh, I've got wrong. Ah, oh, because they're selective groups, I think. So if I do it without having that left here, then it should work. If we slow it down, we can see that it is actually doing it. Yep, so there you go. So um, by default, effects are saved as uh, as global, but because I created it while they were selected, it assumed that they wanted to be selected. So you can. Uh, like that and here we can see that running so that's how you create groups like that and manipulate data like that MA tricks are really easy especially when you've got fixtures and stuff now let's bring in our two 700s so it'll be 700 01 plus 702 <coughs> fixture 701 Got them both selected or just the first one? Ah. 701 plus 702. Yeah. 701 plus 702. Oh. Oh, there we go. That's better. Alright. So here we have our 700s. Here we can see that we can light up people with them. Oh, isn't that lovely? Now, what we're going to create is firstly a group, because typing in numbers was already annoying enough. And we'll call it 700s. <coughs> now, we're going to create two temp faders. And those temp faders are going to manipulate certain data on those 700s. So, when we grab our 700s, I want to create one so that I've got a fader, and as I push it up, it it controls the, the size of the iris. And I also want to have one for my uh, 
my strobe. So the first thing we do is we bring the fixtures up. We'll bring them up in highlight mode. Uh, sorry, in normal mode. Go to, in this case, beam with the iris, and we'll see what its low point is. Now I know its low point on a 700 is zero. It thinks it's the iris is closed, uh, which is technically true. So we'll, go, we'll come a couple of spots off open, which is 6.5. <coughs> And because we only want to store it with this data and nothing else, no position, uh, we'll create one without any dim or anything. So I'll show you how to do that. So we clear, we grab our 700s, and we remember the number we need is 6. Please. Put them in highlight mode, we can't actually see that, but we can see that it comes out of that. So then we store this to a fader, and I'll choose fader 6 in this case. Fader 6 has appeared down the bottom. Fader 6, all we do is we change the fader to a temp fader, and we change the button to 12. And we'll also name this uh, 700 iris. Now if we jump back to the MA view and we uh, bring up fixture 701 plus 702, up all the way, we can see when we push our fader up, that as we use our temp fader, it fades into that position. And what a temp fader does is it essentially takes whatever you've got running currently, be it programmed or, or in the programmer, and modifies it and lets you sort of crossfade between it. So it's fantastic for video states or something where you want the control of something and when you come out of it, it does it at the same speed. So there's no speed time. I can do it like this or I can do it really quickly. Obviously the 700 or whatever your fixture is will have to catch up. And the same thing has been done with the button. A temp will bring it to its zero point or its tightest point. So I can go <coughs> and flash it like this. Now, we want to do the same thing for the shutter as well. So we'll come back to our nice creme and wing screen. And we'll stay in beam and we'll go to shutter. We'll uh, open them up for a sec and we'll see what its maximum strobe speed is. Max random uh, close. Obviously, we're dealing with a... Maximum speed it'll go. So by the looks of it, the uh, the visualizer doesn't do random. So I'll set it to the highest uh, strobe. That and I'm not sure how well that shows on camera. So we remember that value was 22. <coughs> and we come back in here and we literally just type in 22. And we store that to a fader. Same thing that we did the other one, we make it a temp fader and we make the button a temp as well. Now when we bring up those fixtures again, change our, uh, our strobe speed and also use our iris. Now I'll show you what happens if we had saved with everything in there. So if we'd done it like this and we had let's say a position, let's just tilt them up like this, people so we could see them or something. I know people do this during programming. And we then, then go on 22 and we'd saved it to a fader, in this case 4. Uh, we temp that fader like so. Bring this up, it brings everything up. So, if you want to program and you want to be able to see stuff, 
or your normal fixture position of 50-50 doesn't cut it, you can either park the fixtures, well, not park the fixtures, you can either change their home position or you can create things that segment them. So in this case, you can literally create one that just has dimmer, like so, and that's a standard one. We don't need to do anything with that. All it is is an intensity fader. <coughs> and then once that's out of the programmer, we can then create a position one. Here, and we set this to a position like this. And then, with this running, we can have our programmer clear. And uh, you can see the programmer is totally clear. And let's have a look at a view with a programmer. Uh, that's what I wanted. See that our program is totally clear, and yet we've still got the fixtures up. You can also do color stacks in a similar fashion. So you could have a couple of positions. So let's say, let's create another position. Put them over here. Store that as a button, and then we can go back between our two positions. Or with the programmer clear, we can also create color ones. So in this case, we use the color mixer. Special dialog. That's another thing you can do in 2.9, which is handy, and I'll show that to you right now. It's, um, color picker to your layer, so you can have, let's say, blue here, red in white for reference, and also a red. That's a fantastic way of busking your show, being able to go between your colours. So you can bring your intensity fader down, go to a position, pick a colour, and then push your intensity fader up. And another thing I like to do on my intensity faders, I like to change the, the on and off. I like to have it as dual button, blackout in this case. black and flash because all we're doing is we're doing the fader control so if I want it at zero I can quickly do that or if it's up and I want to black it out I can grab my black button like so and it blacks it out which is incredibly handy anyway hopefully you've enjoyed this video uh, it's a bit of a short one but it's covered a lot and if you've got any questions you know where to find us and feel free to email us thank you for watching